Good evening, everyone. This is Pastor Al on this beautiful Holy Thursday, also called Maundy Thursday. Uh, I want to greet you all in the name of Jesus as we celebrate together the Lord's Supper. Most people traditionally believe that Jesus did this on Thursday evening, and so that's why I chose to do it now. I do want to just let you know that I found my glasses, I found the money, and don't you dare laugh, they were on my nightstand right beside my bed, one on top of the other. I see you laughing out there. Well, anyway, it's good to have some fun. Someone asked me if I had my glasses up over my head. Uh, I didn't, but uh, all things are possible, even some humorous things. The more serious situation of people running from God uh, has not been rectified, and that will take much prayer as I pray for those people, and as you pray for those people in your life. Also, I've been trying to call some of you. I just want you to know that if you don't have my name in your contacts, it comes up as a Mechanicsburg number. And I just want you to know that I'm not a telemarketer. I'm just a televisitor. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this beautiful day. We ask you to enable us with our imaginations to go back some 2,000 years ago to the time when Jesus went through some of the greatest suffering, probably the greatest suffering that any human being has ever gone through. I pray that you will enable us to picture what's there I uh, pray that you will enable me to say what you want me to say. And I just thank you for each one that's here. In Jesus' name, amen. I trust that you have your elements ready. I have mine. This is Pepsi-Cola. And I'm not sure which bread I'm going to use. This is uh, the supermarket brand of unleavened bread, also called uh, Passover matzos. Uh, you can find that in the kosher aisle at uh, at least the giant stores. And I might use this. This is a biscuit that I just made here this morning. Okay. Yesterday was Wednesday, and I totally went off of Holy Week in a sense. And one of the reasons I did that is because that Wednesday, according to most people, was a day of rest. And Jesus actually didn't do anything that we have uh, recorded in Scripture. And it's a good thing, because when you think about it, whatever time he got up on Thursday, he had no time of rest between uh, until the day he died, which was Friday, we think around 3 o'clock, although their hours weren't as precise as ours. So I just want to go through this a minute uh, just to see some of the things he did. He had, he had the Last Supper with his disciples. He had the praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was arrested. He was questioned by the high priest and the chief priests. He was taken before Pilate. He was taken from there before Herod. Then he was judged by uh, Pilate. He was whipped by the soldiers. He was forced to carry his cross beam, which he could no longer do. He was so tired and so beat. And he stumbled. And then he got nailed to a cross. And he hung on that cross, we think, somewhere between five and seven hours. And then he died. I don't know about you, but the thought of all that makes me uh, doing all that, going through all that without sleep, makes me tired and almost dizzy. And so we can understand Jesus' exhaustion, why he didn't even come close to carrying his, uh, cross, his cross, the cross beam. Today I want to look at Luke chapter 22, verse 14, with some comments as we go through this. But we'll do the communion part as we go through. It says in verse 14, when the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired 
to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink it again. Uh, of this, this fruit of the vine, I will not drink again until the kingdom of God comes. And so uh, we believe that he was referring to the Passover. He would never do another celebration like that until the, the uh, wedding of the church and Jesus as the groom, us as the bride in heaven, found, I believe, in Revelation 22. Now, this was either the first or the second cup of wine at the ceremony. Actually, there were four. Um, the usual explanation by Jews for drinking four cups of wine at the Seder, as it's called, cites these four things from Exodus 6, 6 and 7. The first one symbolized, I will remove you, or I will remove you from the burdens of Egypt. The second one, I will save you from their bondage. Third, I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and great judgments. And the fourth one was, I will take you to be my people, and I will be your God. It's interesting or we need to remind ourselves that what we call the Last Supper was the Passover celebration. And it celebrated Israel's coming out of Egypt through the Red Sea. And that is a symbol of the salvation we experience through the death and blood of Jesus Christ. And so, in a way, Jesus took a traditional ceremony with great meaning and transformed it into what we now call communion or the Eucharist. Verse 19 now says that he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body, do this in remembrance of me. We believe this was probably at the beginning of the meal. So I want to invite you at this very time to take your bread and to break it. And if you're there with family members, you may distribute it to each other. After which, uh, I will answer a prayer. So let's uh, break our bread, and then let's eat some, and think about all that happened to Jesus' body, the, the scourging, the being pierced with a sword after he died, the nails going through the hands. Uh, let's, let's meditate on that as we eat. Let us eat together. Let's pray and thank Jesus for all that he did to it for us. Lord Jesus, we thank you today because you willingly, although with deep pain and suffering, went to the cross for us. You suffered the beating. You suffered the questioning. You suffered the nails through your hands and feet. So, Lord, um, it's hard for us to picture, but we try to picture that in our minds. And thank you for being willing to do it in our place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's continue through this story. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you. So we know that Jesus' blood came out as he was, especially on the cross, but also with the whipping. And then, of course, uh, after he died, 
One of the centurions ran a spear into his side and out came blood and water. People tell us that that blood and water symbolizes or actually means, it's what doctors say, a broken heart. He had a broken heart for us. And so I want you to take your, um, your juice, whatever you have there, and let's think about those things that he suffered for us where his precious blood was poured out to make a new covenant for us. In this covenant, God is saying, I will wipe away your sins. I will give you a new life. Um, you will be perfectly restored to me as though you never sinned. So as we think about this, let us drink. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, again, we thank you because you were willing, because you went through all this for my sin, for the sins of the whole world, it says in another gospel. Lord, we, we just thank you for that so much. We thank you that we can be in right relationship for you, with you. And we also pray at this time for those who are not yet there. We ask you, Lord, that your blood would not be spilt in vain for those people. And we ask you to draw them by the Holy Spirit. We ask you to draw them to yourself. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. John supplies a... Uh, another detail about this, in fact, back in Luke it says, But the hand of him who is going to betray me is with mine on the table. The Son of Man will go as it has been decreed, but woe to that man who betrays him. And then John gives us more details, John thirteen twenty one. Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified. I tell you the truth. One of you is going to betray me. His disciples looked around and they stared at each other at a loss to know which of them he meant. One of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, that was John, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter motioned to this disciple and said, Ask him which one he means. Leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. Then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, son of Simon. As soon as G Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. What you are about to do, do quickly, Jesus told him. But no one at the table understood why Jesus said this to him. Since Judas had charge of the money, some thought Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the feast or to go or to go give something to the poor. As soon as Jesus had taken the bread, he went out and it was night. And so we have Jesus even serving communion I believe, we're not sure exactly the uh, exact details when each thing happened, but he even gave bread to Judas, not just this bread, but the other bread. Think about that. If you think, man, how could Jesus love me? Or, I don't, how could God love me? I've made such a mess of my life. I just want to say, Jesus loves the unloving. Jesus loves the people who think they're good but really aren't. Jesus truly loves everyone. And I invite you to come to him in prayer and give yourself to him. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, 
today, what else could we do but thank you? And yet, Lord, there's times when the pain of this day, 2,000 years ago or so, um, this day and tomorrow are beyond our human comprehension. But again, we thank you. And Lord, we hereby freely uh, give ourselves to you as servants to, to follow you and to do your bidding. And I say this, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Just want to encourage you uh, there at your house to sing some songs. I'm not going to sing on the video today. I have uh, our Worship His Majesty hymnal starting around 225. I see when I survey the wondrous cross, the old rugged cross, um, near the cross. Jesus, keep me near the cross. God has brought that to my mind during this week. Lamb of God, um, down at the cross, O sacred head now wounded, lead me to Calvary. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Many songs that you could sing about the death of Christ. Have a great evening, and bye now.